Dear audience, let me introduce you my PhD thesis, which is the impact of triglyceride level on the risk and outcome of different diseases. My name is Luca Havelda, and I'm working as a clinical dietitian at the Institute of Pancreatic Diseases, Samuel University, and my vision is to contribute to the prevention of diseases in association with hypertriglyceridemia. Therefore, my mission is to provide evidence-based and valuable data in this process. To reach my uh, mission, I have two specific goals. Both of them are investigating the effect of different triglyceride level. The first one on the development of diabetes mellitus, and the second one on the outcome of COVID-19 disease. I started my first project uh, uh, last year, September, and it is going to be a systematic me review and meta-analysis. The prevalence of type 2 diabetes mellitus more than doubled in the last 20 years, and according to the literature, 92% of these type 2 diabetes mellitus cases are preventable among men if the risk factors are eliminated in type. Hypertriglyceridemia can be a modifiable and potential uh, risk factor of diabetes mellitus, and although the association between hypertriglyceridemia and diabetes mellitus is highly investigated, whether there is dose dependency is still not clear. Based on guidelines, triglyceride level fall into three main categories. This is the normal, the borderline, and the high. The disassociation between these two diseases is also quite important, given that hypertriglyceridemia also has a quite high prevalence rate. It can affect almost one-third of the population. Therefore, our aim was to investigate the dose-dependent effect of hypertriglyceridemia on the development of diabetes mellitus. Our clinical question was, does hypertriglyceridemia dose-dependently contribute to the development of diabetes mellitus? And we have investigated adult population with different triglyceride level, and their outcome of interest was the development of diabetes mellitus. According to our hypothesis, hypertriglyceridemia is a dose-dependent risk factor of diabetes mellitus. We have conducted our systematic search in three main databases, and after the duplication removal, we have left with more than 21,000 articles. After the careful selection process, we have left with 167 articles to be included in our final analysis, and with the help of the reference chaser, we find uh, 30 more eligible articles. As I earlier mentioned, the outcome of interest was the development of diabetes mellitus, which is a highly prevalent chronic disease, and by itself it means a serious health issue, but it can contribute to the uh, development of other diseases, such as cardiovascular diseases or kidney disease. We are going to be able to analyze more triglyceride-related factors, such as triglyceride glucose index, triglyceride to HDL ratio, and hypertriglyceridemic waste phenotype. But first, let me introduce my uh, preliminary data on the different triglyceride levels. In my first press spot, you can see the odds of incidence diabetes to those who had hypertriglyceridemia at baseline compared with those who did not have hypertriglyceridemia, which means that their triglyceride level was below 1.7 millimole per liter. Here we were able to include eight cohort studies, and as you can see, the heterogeneity is quite high. It is mainly because of the differences in the population. There were uh, differences in the age and uh, gender distribution. Here the pool odds ratio is 2.17, which means that there was a two-fold higher risk of developing diabetes mellitus to those who had hypertriglyceridemia at baseline compared with those who did not have. This is statistically significant and also clinically relevant, and it suggests that diabetes mellitus, uh, that hypertriglyceridemia is a risk factor of diabetes mellitus. But we were curious about the dose dependency, so we have uh, investigated it further. In my second forest plus, you can see those who had the borderline triglyceride level, which means that it was between 1.7 to 2.3 millimole per liter. Compared with those who, had, uh, who did not have hypertriglyceridemia, they also have a higher risk of developing diabetes mellitus. Here we included six cohort studies with a total population number of 36,000 patients. The heterogeneity was low, and the pool dots ratio was 1.45, which means that there was a 45% higher chance of developing diabetes mellitus to those who had the borderline category. 
In my next forest plus, you can see those who had the high triglyceride level, which means that it was above 2.3 millimol per liter. Here we also were in able to include six cohort studies, and here the pool dots ratio was higher. It was 2.16, which suggests that there was a twofold high risk of developing diabetes mellitus to those who had the high triglyceride level. It is slightly higher than the and last one, last forest plots, and it is, and the previous one was also statistically significant and clinically relevant because it suggests that hypertriglyceridemia not just the risk factor of diabetes mellitus, but a dose-dependent risk factor of diabetes mellitus. The strength of our research is the transparent methodology, the large patient numbers, and that we are going to be able to analyze different triglyceride-related indexes. And the main limitation is the heterogeneity, the high heterogeneity, due to the differences of the population, and that we have included retrospective studies as well. As a conclusion, we can see that according to our prelim preliminary results, hypertriglyceridemia is a dose-dependent risk factor of diabetes mellitus. Its implication for practice, of course, to find the, uh, to follow, uh, to create better follow-up visits to patients uh, according to the predictive risk of diabetes mellitus, and to create better patient education to be able to reduce the triglyceride level. Its implication for, for clinical research is to find the most effective lifestyle strategies to reduce triglyceride level, because with this we may have the chance to reduce the incidence of diabetes mellitus as well, and to investigate the dose dependency uh, with uh, other cutoff values, for example, within the normal range or with higher levels. And it also has uh, another implication that it would be really important to investigate whether uh, hypertriglyceridemia has a direct toxic fact, uh, effect uh, for the beta cells. Currently, we we are writing our manuscript. We have finished the risk of bias assessment, Prisma for child and the baseline characteristic table, and we are waiting for the results to be able to follow up with this process. My second project is investigating the effect of different triglyceride level, but on the outcome of COVID-19, and we plan to do a registry analysis. As we all know, from 2019, COVID have affected millions of people all over the world, and its outcome was influenced by many factors, which should be able uh, to, which should be identified to be able to interfere as soon as possible or do early intervention when needed. According to the literature, hypertriglyceridemia is associated with inpatient mortality. However, the association between the different triglyceride levels and the outcome is still not clear. Therefore, our aim was to investigate the dose-dependent effect of hypertriglyceridemia on the outcome of COVID-19 disease. Our clinical question is, does hypertriglyceridemia dose-dependently worsen the outcome of COVID-19? And we plan to investigate adult patients with COVID diagnosis with different triglyceride levels and their outcome of interest, the mortality, the intensive care unit admission, the needs for mechanical ventilation, severity, and the length of hospital stay. According to our hypothesis, hypertriglyceridemia is associated with worse outcomes of COVID-19 dose dependently. To do and carry out this uh, COVID registry analysis, we plan to do the coronavirus registry created by Catlock Study Group, which has a total COVID uh, positive uh, patient cases of 1,100 patients. Currently, we are doing the cleaning of the data table, but we have already done the preliminary data retrieval plan, and now we are uh, working forward with it. As a summary, I have two uh, ongoing projects. Both of them are investigating the effect of different triglyceride levels, and hopefully we are going to be able to submit the first uh, article during this August. Thank you for your attention, and always remember Hippocrates' wise word, leave your drug in the chemist's pot if you can cure the patient with food. Thank you for your attention. <coughs> Thank you for the nice presentation. Congratulations. Any question from the audience? Wonderful presentation. Uh, I liked all of it, but I did not like uh, the question for your first project, which sounded like hypertriglyceridemia contribute to the development of diabetes. So in mm -hmm. science, very subtle, language changes matter and I believe that saying contributing to the development suggests 
causality that hyperlipidemia Can causes diabetes. You can never, ever investigate causality in observational studies associated with a high risk of diabetes. But other than that, it was just perfect. And regarding your second, it, it, it was just a comment. Yes, absolutely, and thank you Language so much for highlighting it. Yes, thank you. And the other thing is that, what is your plan? Because you have got, you've got very detailed data in the COVID uh, uh, study. Uh, will you look at uh, the triglyceride level as a continuous variable, or will you use the same categories, categories. what have been used before? That's a really good question, thank you. Uh, I think uh, I have checked the data and of course not all of the cases has uh, triglyceride uh, data. Uh, so I think that we are going to uh, see whether we can analyze it as a continuous variable, but uh, I think that there is a higher chance of analyzing it as, as uh, this grouping or maybe more groups. So not just the, these three groups, but maybe, for example, between 2.3 to 2.8 millimole per liter, so more categories. So you are using the data from the registry and not from? Not from the METSOL system? No, or, or no? no. I, I think that you've got a wonderful uh, biobank for these patients, lots of lots of blood saved from them. We, we have so what you could do check everyone's triglyceride level and not rely on 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 the on the Only those which, results which available in the electronic medical system we, we we are going to have a meeting next week about it and it's it's really good uh, thank you the causality again um, isn't it just a sort of a, a coincidence that it, these are fat and they have diabetes and they have high triglyceride levels. So if there could be any causality... It's then, the other uh, way. Um, what could be the mechanism? Are this these is, yeah, this is a really great question. They are usually investigating it from the other direction and we know the background of the other direction. And uh, I think that, of course, it can be related to the uh, the patient uh, weight and BMI as well, so it can uh, be related to the fat mass. And I hope that the, those factors, which are the hypertriglyceridemic phase phenotype, are going to be informative in this case. But uh, I think that because they usually investigate it from the, another way, from the different way, um, it, it would be useful. I think it's useful to investigate it from this way as well and to find out whether it can be associated with it. For example, the pancreatic uh, adiposity is more frequent in these patients who have diabetes. Pancreatic? Uh, Steratosis pancreatic. Yes, yes, there are a lot of studies which is investigating whether the patient has only hypertriglyceridemia or pancreatic steratosis or even uh, um, uh, any kind of uh, hepatic diseases. But actually we have tried to exclude those which has this kind of uh, factor to be, to be able to see whether just hypertriglyceridemia. Of course we have limitation because these are population B studies and not each case is it was excluded from the population. <laughs>